But what I want to do tonight is uh, talk about uh, the, the very uh, exciting prospect that we can do something about our whole body aging. And that includes the brain. And uh, so I left, uh, as I mentioned, 15 years ago to see if I could do something about aging, which I felt was one of the last untapped final frontiers of biology and medicine. And at the time, actually, it was the backwater of biology. Uh, my supervisor, Ian Dawes, I think, thought that I was crazy going to work on this thing, which seems like a pipe dream. Um, and uh, you know, there are still those people who uh, believe that this is all just uh, hope. But I hope to convince you tonight that this is uh, no longer a backwater of biology. In fact, it's the cutting edge area of pharmaceutical research and medical development. And actually, it's quite helpful being a professor at Harvard University because then people by default tend to take you more seriously. And I found that to be helpful. Um, so I, normally I do a show of hands. I won't do that tonight. But I want you to, to ask yourself uh, a, a very interesting question. Do you know somebody or some people who look much younger than their actual age? I know I do. Um, do you know some people that are aging prematurely? And I think we all, I can see a lot of people nodding. I think that we all know that we age at different rates, but we don't understand, for the most part, why that happens. And tonight I'm going to tell you about one leading theory about why that happens, and it, it actually turns out that there are genes that we think control the pace of human aging. And if they do exist, and we're pretty sure they do, that, that, that's actually the first insights and inroad to slowing this process down. And I'm, I'm not here to, to make people live 200 years. I don't think that, that will happen, certainly not within any of our lifetimes. But what's very important about aging research, and the reason that I think it's very important to fund this area, is because it, it has a very real possibility of coming up with a pill that can not just treat your existing condition, let's say it's type 2 diabetes uh, or Alzheimer's, but as a side effect, simultaneously prevent 15 to 20 other major diseases. And if we're successful at that, I think that that will be a world worth living in. So what about genes? Well, there are some people who have chosen their parents and their grandparents very well. Here's the person who chose their parents and grandparents best. Uh, this is Madame Calme. She lived in France. And not too long ago, uh, she died at the age of 122. And she uh, still holds the record. Um, but here she's, a, she's an old lady. But of course, when she was in her 70s and 80s, she looked more like she was 40 or 50 and was fit and healthy. She was vivacious. Uh, in fact, at her, this is her 117th birthday. Apparently, at her 116th birthday, a reporter uh, said it would be great if, uh, if he was able to see her next year. And she said, I don't see why not, young man. You look perfectly healthy to me. <laughs> Uh, she's great. I've got a whole list of these. Um, and I think most of us are not even that sharp on a good day. Um, she also said, I have just one wrinkle and I'm sitting on it. <laughs> so she, she's a role model for all of us. And it, so the point here is not to keep people older for longer. It's to keep them healthier and younger and more cognitive um, and, and delaying dementia um, during the middle ages. So, who would say no to a medicine that was able to make most people get through their, their midlife, their 50s, 60s, 70s, without the fear of getting cancer uh, and being robbed of a healthy life? And that's the sort of technology we're talking about being possible tonight. 